run the race in 98 days with the tail at the tide to spare. But that was oh so long ago when we raced her up and it down. Now these old ships, they've had their chips some 40 years or more. She was sold away to a Dago bunch and the bladers they put her ashore. Now somewhere south of the Lindus Nays and north of the Straits of Le Mans. But with the fishes swimming around her ribs, there lies the robin a dam. But with the fishes swimming around her ribs, there lies the robin a dam. Well, I lived in Colchester in the early days, uh, close to the highs, and I used to uh, spend all my spare time down on the barges, me and about half a dozen of my mates, and we was determined to be bargemen when we left school. And we was advised by our parents and the school not to go barging, because that was a dying job, and they thought at the end of the war the barges would uh, disappear very, very quickly, you know. And they were all coming into their wants, by the way. But this made us all the more determined that we would go barging. And uh, and my mates were a little bit older than me. They left school just ahead of me. And uh, Minnie Maynard, my mentor, is a couple of years older than me. He got a job in a barge called the Flower of Essex. And one of my most memorable days is coming to Molden, playing truck from school that is, coming to Molden on the Flower of Essex and we, we tarred the boat, that was our day's work, you see. And, uh, and a year later I left school and I went third hand in a barge called the Gladys. Most barges didn't have a third hand in them days, they cut down to two, just a skipper and a mate. But the bigger barges retained the third hand system. And, uh, and my terms of contract was um, a pound a week of me grub, a pound a week of me grub. And I didn't get much grub and I hardly ever got the pound. <laughs> My first job on the barge was to go and put a new flag up, that's a hundred foot up, and single-handed I didn't get any help with it. That was a, really a test to see if I'd clear off home. They didn't really want a third hand, you know, and they'd hope I'd clear off home. But I was I was more afraid of uh, going home and telling me mum I couldn't get up the barge as barged after saying I was going to be a bargeman. And then my kid brother, of course, he thought I was Superman. So I was more afraid of not going up the mast than I was of going up the mast. So yeah, I went up and put a new flag up, the first, first job on the Gladys. people were they a different breed to, to today they they were very interested well I think what we found interesting about them was the freedom they had you see because they couldn't clock in or clock out they didn't get paid any holidays they got time off when they were in their own port and they were paid by the share so the faster they got about the more money they earned and but you've got all types doing it. We um, we had one man called Holy Joe, 
because he was very religious and he wouldn't sail on a Sunday. But um, so you've got all types still, not really, and they might have appeared rough. I think people ashore thought bargemen were rough, had a fairly low opinion in them days, because they treat them like film stars today. But no, they were not highly recognised in, in, the, in the early days. And was life very hard here in those early days, working on the barges? Yeah, I, I think it, it was harder than what people work today. But there again, all jobs were fairly manual and labour intensive. I've gone back to, you know, the early 50s, you know. I think work was hard in them days. People did expect to work hard. And uh, we, you know, we had to stow the timber ourselves and, and sometimes unload ourselves. And, and when you become just a skipper and a 15 year old mate, you had to work all the gear, the leverts, and uh, you spent long hours sailing through the night as well. And we only had paraffin lamps, of course. <clears throat> and so we had to cook as well. The ships went, there's the bang on a spread juggle end. W's the wheel where we all take a turn. And X, Y and Z is the name on the stern. So merrily, so merrily, so merrily are we. There's none as blithe as the bargemen at sea. Sing high, sing low as we sail along. Give an old barge a breeze and you cannot go wrong. To, to be a good mate, what we used to do, we used to live aft in the after cabin and cook our food in the forecastle, and we had a coal range. And when you thought you was good, it's when you could sail the barge up swim, us tacking up swim with the leebids working the jib sheets and everything, can keep a duff boiling. So, I mean, if you put a big shovel full of coal on the fire, the fire would go low and the duff would go off the boil, and I'll tell you what a duff is in a minute. And uh, and so you kept putting little bits of coal on, keep running down, put a little bit of coal on, just to keep it very, very bright, you see. And the duff was our mainstay food, and that's a current duff, and that really is a suet pudding. And, uh, and we'd put that in, the, we'd wrap it in a cloth, we'd never have it in a basin like people do at home mainly. We'd wrap it in a cloth and tie it, and put it in boiling water, and have to keep boiling, that one about an hour and a half minimum. But you could also leave it in for as long as you wanted. And you, if you boiled it for six hours, that wouldn't overcook. So when you did eventually get to anchor, there was your duff already. And what we used to do was have potatoes, a joint of meat, a nice leg of lamb was our favorite. And you'd take that aft and then you'd hold the wheel while the skipper had ease. Then you'd go below and have yours. Well, that was getting cold, of course. <laughs> But what we used to do is only eat half the duff, because that was a huge big round thing as big as a football, you know. <laughs> You'd eat half, half that and save that, and that would be tomorrow's breakfast. And you'd actually slice that and put it in the frying pan and fry current duff. Now I know everybody grimits, but unless you've had it, you, don't, you haven't lived. Because really that was uh, the nearest I can liken it to, is them American donuts that you get at South End. They're absolutely gorgeous, they melt in your mouth. It used to be two men and a boy to operate a barge. Well, the war thinned them. The, the better, the healthier men went went to the war and left the elderly skippers. And as us boys left school, we had to become mates. And uh, we wouldn't have been a mate until we was eighteen in the older days. And so there we are as uh, old men and skip and, and mates. And uh, and I think the skipper the skippers thought we weren't really up to the job. And, uh, but we were, we, I think we were very keen, we were very, very competitive amongst ourselves, the mates, and I think we really did try to, um, to be good mates, and I'm sure we were. Even though we were young, we were tough, and we, we could put up with the long hours. 
Well, I tried going ashore once, and I and I found you you lost the you lost the comradeship and the and the attitude of all the time. We we're so interested in our job that we used to talk about it all the time. I mean, other people go to work and come and try and forget it, but the barges were, were your life, very important, and uh, you know try and get a bit more at your barge or improve it or even just paint it up was very important to you and you, you spent a lot of time weekends you'd spend aboard painting the ship when you should have had time off really but they were so attractive to you once they get hold of you can't let go <laughs> at last he came aboard with the girl on his arm he's gonna give a barge in and take a farm stormy weather boys windy weather boys when the wind blows our barge will go now the mate ran forward and the cook fell in the dock. The skipper caught his fingers in the main sheet block. Stormy weather boys, stormy weather boys, when the wind blows our barge will go. At last we're off down Limehouse Reach when the leaf bit gets on Greenwich Beach. Stormy weather boys, stormy weather boys, when the wind blows our barge will go.